This is an example of a plexiform neurofibroma from a patient with neurofibromatosis type 1. Okay, um, here is the nerve. And you can see the nerve is kind of tangled and twisted around and we're seeing multiple cross sections through it. It's massively expanded, much larger than it should be because what happens is the pre-existing nerves get filled up with the neurofibroma contents. It just kind of packs the nerve like a sausage and just expands the outer perineurium um, as it fills the nerve. The, the cells, of course, are going to be bland spindle cells that have kind of a buckled or bent or crooked shape, um, or some people like to say wavy, although I don't really love that term. And I have a, on my YouTube channel, I have a whole long video about neurofibromas and neurofibromatosis type 1 if you're uh, interested in learning more. But you've got these Schwann cells as well as fibroblasts and perineurial cells all mixed together. You tend to have these little strips of or wisps of collagen in here that some people have likened to shredded carrots. And then usually there's a variable amount of mixoid, um, bluish mixoid material in the background. So all of that kind of haphazardly mixed together and expanding and dilating a nerve. And then you're going to, because, because neurofibromas are a tangled mess of nerves, grossly they have that bag of worms appearance. When you cut through them microscopically, you'll see multiple cross sections of nerve because of all of the different tangles of nerve getting cut um, uh, through at different levels. So multi-nodularity like this is characteristic of plexiform neurofibroma, but I will point out that you should never call something an outright plexiform neurofibroma if you don't know for sure that it had a bag of worms appearance grossly or the patient has known NF1. And the reason is that if you call something a plexiform neurofibroma, you are giving the patient neurofibromatosis. Basically, this one diagnosis is essentially labeling the person for life with NF1, which is a bad disease that has a risk of being passed on to the children, which has a risk of giving you malignant transformation into MPNST. It's a big problem to give someone NF1 if they don't really have it. So you want to make sure this patient had a known uh, had known NF1, so no problem here, okay? So we've got the distended nerves, multiple nodules, and also something I often see in the context of NF1 particularly is that plexiform neurofibromas often have areas of diffuse neurofibroma, that is this kind of trickling, inter intervening um, neurofibroma that trickles into the adipose tissue and wraps around normal structures. You often have plexiform and diffuse neurofibroma coexisting with one another, and that's what's going on here. There's kind of some background diffuse neurofibroma, and then there's plexiform neurofibroma um, here. And I don't think this particular example has it, uh, unless I've, I've forgotten or recalled incorrectly. But in um, in neurofibromas, I, I told you just like in schwannomas, neurofibromas can have scattered hyperchromatic atypia. Sometimes it can be pretty big atypical cells, and I particularly see that more often, it seems, in patients with NF1. They tend to have more of that scattered degenerative atypia, and sometimes that can cause concern for um, is this transformation into uh, sarcoma, MPNST. Um, and there's a, a, again, I've got videos about that on my YouTube channel because it's a really complex um, topic. So in any case, this is a good example of a plexiform NF from an NF1 patient.